to my mom and my dad um, are teachers. Well, my mom was, she's a district official now, but my dad is retired and he was a teacher. Um, my name is Uli Dilo Mukhashwa and I'm a client relationship manager at Alan Gray and our role is to educate people on financial investments. So the reason why we've partnered with Partners for Possibility, I like that, um. it, it, hey, Partners for Partners for Possibility, is because of the educational element and the empowerment element. So we're big on empowerment and educating people. We believe that investments are, are, are bought and not sold, so I'm not here to sell, but really educate you about what we do here at Adam Gray. So I thought about this powerful quote that says, teaching is more than inspiring knowledge, it is inspiring change. And I think that's what teachers do and principals do on a day-to-day -day basis, that they give so much of themselves that sometimes they often forget to give to themselves, right? <laughs> and the reason why I say that is that we often make wrong decisions by thinking that this is an investment, right? It's a beautiful car. And don't get me wrong, I'd, I'd love to own one of these cars one <coughs> day, but I'm very conscious of living within my financial means. And the reason why I say this is because as soon as you get this car, as soon as it hits the road, it loses about 33% in value through by depreciation. Now I'm going to show you the difference of having this beautiful car versus saving towards long-term investing. So if we look at these simple <coughs> illustrations, I know that that car does not definitely cost 200,000 rand. I should probably have added a one next to that, <laughs> right? But just for the case of simplicity, I thought, let me just use 200,000 rand. So if we look at 200,000 rand and you look at the first year, as I said, it's already lost value by about 33%. And as if you go down even more in five years time, you're sitting with a car that's lost about 50% in value. And yet we put so much value in having this car. But if you look at the real difference, so for example, if we then again took and compared apples with apples and took a car that had a value of 100,000 Rand, again, if we keep it over five years, you'd be sitting with a value of 50,000 Rand after five years, right? But if you took investments, and, it, and you can see that it's a steady growth. So shares don't do this. I know it looks like a straight line, but it does this. But over the long term, it, it, it yields an, an inflation beating return. So if you start with 100,000 Rand, you see that there's a steady growth due to compounding interest. So in five years' time, you're sitting with 160,000 Rand. So you've increased value by about 50% as opposed to losing the value. So that's the real difference. So we believe that it's very imperative to choose carefully knowledge over feelings. We often go with what's you know popular and how would people perceive me. You know, I need to have this beautiful car just to show that I'm living my best life. But are you really? So we really think that it's very important to choose carefully and use knowledge rather than feelings. Which brings me to this quote by Albert Einstein that says, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. So if I take another illustration and I said, if we took 500 rand debit over, debit over, what am I saying? Debit yeah. order, rather. <laughs> if I took 500 rand debit order and I saved it for the first five years every month, for the first five years, so from December 2006, Every month for the five, first five years up until December 2011, and, I, and then stopped, so there are no more contributions here. In 10 years' time, I'd be sitting with 71,700 Rand. And if I did the same exercise with 1,000 Rand every month for the first five years, and stopped because life happens, you know, and allowed it to enjoy compounding interest, I'd be sitting with 143,000 Rand. And so it goes with. 2000, sorry, with 1,500, 2,000, and 2,500 Rand. That's the power of compounding interest. So it's very imperative to live by this quotation by Benjamin Franklin that says, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. We are in the business of creating long-term wealth for our clients. This is a representation of our clients. We're really trying very hard to fight the perception that Alan Gray is for the super rich and the elite, because that's not the case. Alan Gray is for individuals who are working hard towards earning a living and would like to save towards long-term investments and they meet our minimum investment requirements. Also, we think it's very important that before you select an asset manager, 
You shouldn't just go to past performance because no one can guarantee past performance. However, you should look at the four Ps. The first one would be the philosophy because the philosophy is the DNA of a company and it teaches you how that particular asset manager thinks. Then you should look at the process because then that speaks to how they implement their philosophy and the people behind that philosophy which will then ultimately yield to the performance. So our investment philosophy is that we purchase stocks that we believe are trading at a discount in the market. So we would buy here, we would hold on to our stocks as soon as we feel that they've reached the intrinsic value, which simply means their maximum worth, then we would sell this particular stock. So our investment professionals are responsible for implementing our investment philosophy. So they sit on portfolio meetings and they decide whether a particular stock is a buy or a sell. And they do this by doing uh, due diligence over this particular company. So they look at the qualitative as well as the quantitative. The quantitative would relate to looking at the actual financials of that company, doing the cash flow projections, and the qualitative would be going to that actually um, the actual company, doing company visits, and having one-on-one -on -one decisions with key decision makers of that company, just to understand holistically what drives that company. This is just to illustrate, oh sorry, we also understand that there's a lot of noise in the market, so people try and time the market. Right? As I said, shares don't move in an upward line, they do this, they fluctuate. So people try and time the market and when greed trickles in, when shares seem to be trading at a premium, people want to purchase it. As soon as the share fall, price falls, then fear trickles in and they want to sell it. But we believe that it's very important to spend time in the market rather than trying to time the market because over the long term, shares tend to yield an inflation beating return. So this is just to illustrate that we are contrarian in our thinking. We don't follow the popular herd when shares seem to be trading at a premium. We stick to our investment philosophy, and this has allowed us to currently manage 539 billion assets under, and under management. It's important to have a goal as well when you want to have investments. right? We always believe that you should start with a plan because it lays the foundation where you'd like to go. And then... And plan and plan and, and have goals on how to reach those goals and then find that particular fund that, that fits your investment plan and repeat the cycle. You should set short, medium and long term goals. The short would speak to your emergency funds. So say for instance your car bursts or there's car repairs, unforeseen events, unexpected events on emergencies, right? Or um, your geezer, your geezer bursts. That's the funds that you should be tapping into and not your credit card. So we have different funds such as the money market fund, which is designed to yield a reputable return within a short period, say 12 months. That's the type of funds that you should be using because it's more transactional. When life happens, that's the, the, the emergency funds that you should be tapping into. Then medium would speak to maybe saving towards your child's education. So I have a three-year-old and my plan is to, to save towards her education. So it could be like 5, 10 to 15 years time. That's your medium term. Um, and there's funds that also are designed to yield a good return within the medium term. And then your long term goals should be towards your retirement and your estate planning. So I feel that it's very, very important. And just to touch high level, that this speaks to your short, medium and long term. So unit trusts are very flexible. So unit trusts are easy, accessible funds that give you um, access to the financial markets that you wouldn't at ordinarily have access to. So in the financial markets, there's like bonds, listed properties, shares, and money market instruments that I alluded to earlier on. And then the tax-free investment is a good form of saving towards your child's education is for your medium-term goals. So there, it's easy and it's accessible. However, there are some restrictions that were imposed by government and not by any asset manager. So tax-free investment was implemented by the government to try and get people to start saving in South Africa. So while they, you won't be getting any capital gains tax or dividends tax or interest tax, there are restrictions in terms of how much you can contribute annually into the tax-free investment. And that limitation is 33,000 Rand every year. And then your retirement speaks to you saving towards your retirement. It's putting savings towards your retirement, is for life. And one should always be cognizant of putting that you know, money aside towards your retirement. So lastly, I want to leave you with this quote that says, someone is sitting in the shade 
today because someone planted a tree a long time ago by Warren Buffett. As I alluded, I have wonderful parents who did their absolute best to give me the form of education that allows me to stand here and speak boldly about investments in the power of financial education. I have a three-year-old and my, my aim is to build a legacy for her. So I've opened a unit trust for her as well as a retirement annuity for her. And you may be asking, but why a retirement annuity? Because you'll only have access to it by the age of 55 when she does retire, I mean decide to retire. But I understand the power of compounding interest and I want to leave a legacy for her.